Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we are going to cover AIMS test. So let's start. So let's first understand that from where this word AIMS has been taken. Then you should know that this word has been taken from the name of Sir Bruce Nathan Ames from University of California, USA, who developed AIMS test in 1970s, right? Now let's see what is AIMS test. AIMS test is actually a kind of mutational reversion assay or it is also called as bacterial reverse mutation test, okay? Now let's see why we use AIMS test. AIMS test is used to test the mutagenicity of chemicals, okay? Now what is mutagenicity? Mutagenicity is the ability to cause mutations. Suppose in laboratory, we have formulated a new drug and we would like to know whether this particular drug is able to cause mutations or not. Then we can test that particular drug for mutagenicity by performing AIMS test, okay? Now let's see further. AIMS test is actually most widely used for the detection of potential carcinogens. Now, what are carcinogens? Carcinogens are those kind of chemical substances or agents which are known to cause different type of cancers. And it has been reported as per literature that around 90% carcinogenic agents are also having mutagenic properties associated with them. Means most of the carcinogens also act as mutagens. That's why AIMS test is even more popular and is successful for the detection of potential carcinogenic agents. So this was a brief introduction about AIMS test. Now we are going to talk about the principle of AIMS test. So here let's first understand about the use of special tester strains which are of a bacteria named as Salmonella enterica sirova typhi murium which are used to perform AIMS test. Because of the use of bacterial strain in performing AIMS test, AIMS test is also called as a microbiological screening test for different type of chemical mutagens testing, okay? Now, we are saying that these tester strains are special tester strains. Why we are calling these strains of Salmonella as special tester strains? Because these strains are highly sensitive to chemical mutagens. Now, question comes, why these strains are highly sensitive to chemical mutagens? Because these strains are a kind of mutant strains. What are mutant strains? Mutant strains are those kind of strains which are genetically modified in laboratory. Now let's see what kind of genetic modification is done in special tester strains. So first level of mutation is done in histidine operon. Mutation is done in such a way that such kind of tester strain will not be able to produce histidine amino acid which is an essential requirement for their growth. That's why we call that mutant strain of Salmonella what is used in case of AIMS test is a kind of histidine oxidroph. Let's see second level of genetic modification which is done at cell wall level and mutation is done in such a way that it results in leaky cell walls. Why leaky cell walls are desirable? Because leaky cell walls leads to increased permeability of these bacterial strains for easy entry of test chemicals. Let's talk about the third level of mutations. Third level of mutations are done in such a way or genetic modification are done in such a way in these strains so that their DNA repair mechanisms should be non-functional type. It means they should have impaired DNA repair mechanisms, which should not support conversion of histidine oxytroph to histidine prototroph. Okay, now we are going to talk about the principal part. So here we, we will try to understand the principle of AIMS test by considering two different cases. In first case, we are going to take this mutant strain of Salmonella, what we call as special tester strain, or simply we can say histidine oxytroph. This is strain of histidine oxytroph, when we treat it, with test chemical 1, then what we report as an outcome of this reaction that histidine oxytroph in the presence of test chemical 1 get converts into histidine prototroph, okay? Initially, it was not able to produce histidine amino acid, but after coming in contact with test chemical 1, this oxytroph has regained its ability to produce histidine. Let's see the second case. In second case, we are going to again take the same histidine oxytrophic strain of Salmonella and we are going to treat it with test chemical 2, okay? This is a different chemical and what we observe at the end of their treatment reaction, histidine oxytroph remains still histidine oxytroph. So what we can conclude that test chemical 1 here was actually a kind of mutagenic agent that converted oxytroph to the prototroph. Or in other words, we can say that mutagenic chemical will be having the ability to revert the mutation or we can say to induce a kind of back mutation in the oxytrophic strain to make it prototroph, right? And in case of test chemical 2, what we can observe that histidine oxytroph, what we have taken to perform the reaction, even after treatment with test chemical 2, it still remained histidine oxytrophic strain. It means it has not converted in the presence of test chemical 2 
to its respective prototroph that's why we can say it was a kind of non mutagenic chemical now here we are saying that test chemical 1 is mutagenic then there is also a good possibility that this mutagenic agent could also be a potential carcinogen because as per literature we know that most of the carcinogenic agent also show mutagenic properties right so here we can conclude the principle of aims test like this that aims test works on the principle of reversal of mutation in bacteria by test mutagen or potential carcinogen so this was about the principle of aims test now you should know here on this slide we are going to cover type of chemical mutagens the understanding of chemical mutagens of two different types what i am going to cover here is very important when we talk about aims test learning right now let's see what are these two types of chemical mutagens first one is directly acting as mutagens and the second one is pro mutagens when we are going to talk about the first one that is directly acting as mutagens and when we treat histidine oxotrophic salmonella strain with these type of chemical agents which directly act as mutagen what we observe histidine oxotroph get converts into histidine prototroph on the other hand if we talk about second type that is pro mutagens what we observe pro mutagens when added to histidine oxotrophic strain histidine oxotrophic strain still remain histidine oxotrophic strain it means it will not regain its ability to produce histidine after coming in contact with pro mutagens now why it is so because it has been reported that the second type of chemical mutagens are of such type what we are calling here as pro mutagens which actually require some kind of metabolism for their activation that's why when we are working with pro mutagens we need to add rat liver extract here along with pro mutagen mixture to histidine oxotrophic strain only then histidine oxotroph will be able to convert into histidine prototroph because here rat liver extract will actually be a source of rat liver enzymes and those enzymes will be acting on these pro mutagens which are actually inactive forms and will convert them into active mutagenic form so this is an important slide covering two different type of mutagens knowledge of which is very important when we learn this topic aims test okay now on this slide we will cover all those steps what are followed in laboratory to perform aims test so let's see one by one what are these steps so firstly we take a tube and in that tube what we are going to take here dilute molten top agar and this top agar will be having what it will be having only small amount of histidine or we can say traces of histidine right now to this top agar tube we add what salmonella strain with desirable mutations especially it will be what histidine oxotrophic strain and along with salmonella strain or tester strain we will be adding what in this tube we will be adding rat liver extract why we are going to add rat liver extract because there is possibility that test chemical what we are going to use maybe that cannot directly act as mutagen but that can be a type of pro mutagen which needs some kind of metabolic activation now let's see the second step in second step what we are going to take we are going to take two plates okay and these plates will be having what these plates will be having minimal medium what is minimal medium minimal medium is a kind of medium which will be having all essential components except one or two essential nutrients so here what kind of essential nutrients will be missing over here of course histidine right histidine amino acid will not be present in this minimal medium next step will be labeling of these plates one plate we will label here as control and another plate we will label here as test okay after this step labeling step what we are going to do we are going to take this top agar and of course without test mutagen we will add this mixture of top agar containing tester strain and rat liver extract to this control plate and in another case or we can say in case of second plate what we have labeled as test what we will be going to do in this case we will firstly add test mutagen to the top agar containing tube along with salmonella strain and rat liver extract and then this mixture will be poured where on the test plate okay so now after test and control reactions what we are going to do we will go for the incubation step okay incubation here is usually done at 37 degree celsius temperature and for 48 to 72 hours and after incubation step what is the next step of course observation part in observation part what we look for we look for mutational revertants that whether colonies are appearing or not if colonies are appearing of course they are representing as histidine prototrophs so let's first talk about the control in case of control what we can observe some of the colonies we can observe here right now if we have not supplied here histidine we have taken minimal medium and we have not added mutagenic agent then why it is so that some colonies appeared here and some bacteria have regained their ability to produce histidine although the strain what we have used was actually histidine oxotroph 
This is so because spontaneous mutations also occur in bacterial cells, right? Some bacterial cells can also regain their ability to produce histidine again. So these are called as actually spontaneous revertents or we can say natural revertents. But on the other hand, if we talk about test plate, in test plate what we can observe where we have treated our histidine oxotrophic strain with test mutagen, of course there is more number of colonies or we can say more revertents are there. Right, and these revertents are representing us what induced revertents. So here, what we can conclude: more the number of colonies, more the number of histidine prototroph is. More the number of histidine prototroph means more is the rate of mutation reversion here, and of course, more powerful is the mutagenic agent. So this was all about basic steps what are followed in laboratory to perform AIMS test. Now, a few more points I would like to make you clear here. Initially, I mentioned about top agar. Top agar is a kind of agar which is usually having lesser concentration of agar. When we compare it with that of bottom agar, what we pour in petri plates, right? Secondly, you should know here. Here, I mentioned that in top agar we add, add small amount of histidine, or we can say traces of histidine. So, what is the role of addition of this small amount of histidine here? This small amount of histidine actually helps the bacteria. to survive during initial few hours of coming in contact with test mutagen and secondly it has also been reported that there are some test mutagens or we can say there are some chemicals which can only act on replicating bacteria right so that replication will only occur when all kind of essential nutrients will be present in the medium that's why traces of histidine actually help the bacteria to start their replication cycle so these are the functions of traces of histidine now let's conclude this presentation with advantages and limitations of aims test so if we talk about advantages then aims test is a kind of simple rapid and inexpensive test for carcinogenic agent testing right and when we talk about direct testings available for carcinogenic agent then always remember they make the use of animals they are costly and of course they are time taking so when we compare those direct testing of carcinogenic agent with that of aims test which is actually a kind of indirect test for carcinogenic agent testing then of course aims test is more advantageous and if we talk about limitations it may show false negative results pro mutagens are reported as safe sometimes right and all type of pro mutagens cannot be detected by using aims test so this was all about our today's video i hope this content will be helpful to you and if you found it helpful then don't forget to press like and subscribe to our channel Thank you so much keep watching